Horses are powerful. They're agile and fast. They're athletes. And a good number of them run for a living. Horse racing goes back more than 350 years in Newmarket. Many consider it the birthplace of thoroughbred racing. In the early 1600s, the royal family came to the small town and built Newmarket Palace, which was originally used for hunting. But it was Charles II who brought his passion for horse racing to the area in the 1660s, which has become the center of life in the modern community. There are more than 3,500 racehorses here, expanding from its royal roots to the worldwide phenomenon it is today. But given the high level of their training, these horses need specialized care. Now, there's obviously, in, 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 in our time here, these, you keep mentioning the horses as athletes. Mm -hmm. And they are truly treated as athletes. They are massaged, they are you know, bathed, they have heated blankets, they have you know, uh, all these great things because they are truly just like an Olympic athlete treated that way and, and obviously have a monetary attachment connected to it. But in this day and age, of course, as we talked about, like in the States with dog racing or something, there's that sensitivity to, you know, why do we do these types of things and should we do these types of things? Talk me through how you all have evolved in terms of caring for the horses and as veterinarians, really being partnered with the trainers so you're not just an afterthought when they're hurt, you're really there to prevent them from being hurt from day one and how that's actually changing the perceptions as well. Well, that's very much, uh, that's very true. The <clears throat> Any athlete, be it a four-legged or two-legged one, obviously goes through training processes, goes, puts, is put at risk from injury oh. due to whatever type of sport they are part uh, participating in. And uh, modern sport, be it, again, four-legged or two-legged, uh, is very much uh, revolves around prevention of, of, of injury as much as one possibly can, and it, once uh, and if the, the athlete does become injured, then managing that injury in such a way right. to facilitate rehabilitation and to allow the athlete to return to sporting, to training and sporting endeavor once it's mm -hmm. healed again. Mm -hmm. As vets, we can either act as technicians in some ways, mm -hmm. But on the other hand, we should probably act as people who actually understand the fundamental requirements of the discipline or the sport that the horse is involved in, what those requirements are, what the people who own those horses want of their horses, so that we can help and assist in maintaining mm -hmm. health and soundness of those horses. And at the same time, occasionally saying, taking a step back and saying, hold on guys, right. it's time to take five yeah. and give the animal a bit of a break. Dr. Ilka Gonsera Levesque is the only female racehorse trainer in the UK to also be a veterinarian. She came to Newmarket to open Gansera Levesque Equine Services, a family-run yard that has shaken up the status quo. Going through the rigors of both the academic training of veterinary school as well as a practical horsemanship training give her a solid foundation to maximize a horse's well-being that may run against the grain. Tell me now, when you look at these horses from a veterinary perspective and a training perspective, what are some of the things you think you're able to spot or see differently that maybe the non-veterinary couldn't? Well, we're maybe a little bit more in depth and not just, um, I always have the long term in mind. So we always, when we, get, when we get a new horse in that's been through different hands, we just, I try to look at it like a, like a white piece of paper and then start from scratch and let the horse kind of tell me and guide me. And, and then start working the horse up properly. Do you think you're more in touch with the physicality of the horse because of that medical training? Yes, I do, and yeah. I think I spot things quicker. So I always yeah. say, I, my USP is like having a vet here 24 seven, which right. is the truth, because we live here as well, so. Now, is there, is there a, a particular thing that uh, you think you've done uh, in training that's different because of this unique background? Or is there something say, this is my secret formula? Well, I try to, uh, I definitely use uh, being a veterinarian as a USP, so I, uh, I try to bring in more scientific things. So we use a heart rate monitor, um, GPS and stride length device. Mm -hmm. But it always also depends on the client, how much information do they want. But like if, 
if they're really tech savvy or if they want to see graphs, they get the graphs and they get every information. So sure. it's always about the communication. What does the, some owners just want you to get on with it? But so we use all these different things. Just uh, I'm big on marginal gains. Mm -hmm. So I, I try to take all the boxes. He came in about a month ago. Uh, he's been with somewhere else and he was supposedly like a terrible horse to ride, unrideable. And yeah, didn't want, didn't want to just get rid of them. It's clear that putting veterinarians at the center of a thoroughbred's care improves their health, training, and overall well-being. And Dr. Gansara Levesque is proving that when horses' well-being is put first, everyone involved, from the horse to the jockey to the owner, benefits. So it's important for our profession to be active and push for what makes sense for these incredible athletes. Learn more about how you can be involved in the U.S. by contacting the North American Association of Racetrack Veterinarians.